any less than that is difficult to work with, you need to start with about a pound and a half and gradually work up to at least about three pounds. I'm going to get the wheel going just as fast as it'll go and wet my hand. I put the wedged clay on the wheel head and I'm going to wet my hands. If you're right-handed, normally the wheel is going to turn counterclockwise. If you're left-handed, you can reverse the wheel and it turns clockwise. But you lock, if you're right-handed, lock your left elbow into your body. You want to stabilize this hand. You don't want it really moving a lot. So this hand, the right hand's going to be moving and this elbow's going to be all over the place. And then when I start raising the form up, then I'll stabilize that elbow. What I just did is called coning up. This hand has stabilized the clay and I've squeezed and raised it into a cone shape. I'm going to lock my hands like this. Whoops. We need to read it. Action. I'm coning up and then I'm going to lock my hands together like that and push straight down. And the left hand is just holding the clay and keeping the clay from getting off center. By the time you cone up about three times, your clay will almost fall into the center. And centering is not something visual, it's something you feel. You can tell when the clay is centered on the wheel, it turns real smoothy, smoothly, excuse me, and there's no bump, bump, bump. I'll cone up one more time. You don't want to, if you cone up too fast, you'll get a little hole at the top. I didn't get one, but if you get a little hole at the top, you've coned up too fast. Push it back down. Okay, now I'm going to flatten the top out. Once I do that, I'm ready to open. The clay's centered, it's turning smoothly. And I'm going to slow the wheel down. I'm going to take my thumbs and push in to open. And I'm going straight down. This time, both my elbows are locked onto my legs, kind of steadying my hands. This arm is positioned about at 7 o'clock. I'm going to take this part of my fingers and push down and pull towards my left hand. I've opened the clay and I'm going to open it again because I've still got it a little bit thick on the bottom. What I'm doing now is recompressing the bottom because I've opened the clay and I've stretched it. I've stressed it a little bit and if I don't recompress the bottom a crack could form. So I'm taking this part of my finger and I'm working from the side wall in towards the center just with the ball of my finger. Okay. I'm going to recompress the bottom now because since I've opened the clay I've stretched it. So I'm going to take the ball of my finger, come down the side wall to the floor, and work towards the center. And I'm going to do that three or four times to recompress all those clay particles in the bottom. And it'll make that bottom stronger and less likely to crack. When I come out, I'll reset my rim, and there's two ways to reset the rim. You can either pinch it and lay that finger on top to flatten it out, or you can pinch it with your left hand and lay your finger on top like that, whichever way you're more comfortable. And I switch back and forth. Sometimes I do it one way. Other times I'll do it the other way. Okay, now I'm going to raise the wall up. My left hand is really just going to steady the clay, and I'm using, again, the balls of my fingers, just resting them against the inside wall. 
I've got the sponge in my hand so that when my hand starts to dry, I can just squeeze it and give it a little more water. And I'm holding it like this. And this is the part of my finger I'm going to pull up with. This is not the only way to do it, but it's the way that works best for me. Uh, you may see other people do it a different way, and it works fine for them. My right elbow is resting on my leg. My left elbow, I'm pulling into my body. These fingers on the inside, and I'm going to push and come up. And I stop throwing about that far before I get to the top because I don't want my rim to be too thin. I'm going to raise it again. And I'm stopping about a quarter of an inch from the top. I'm going to reset my rim. And resetting your rim will make the rim stronger. Uh, and if it's, it will also keep it from being too thin. And if it's too thin, it's more likely to crack. I'm kind of lifting the clay. I take my index finger and I kind of make a little groove at the bottom so that I can get in there and lift it up. The fingers on the inside of the bow are slightly below the fingers outside. Set my rim. This is a cylinder. When you're throwing a bowl, it's different. But when you throw a cylinder, you want the floor flat and you want the walls to come straight up. If you have a big curve in the bottom like you'd have on a bowl, it will be thicker. So I'm going to raise it up again. And then for a pound and a half of clay, this is about as tall as that cylinder is going to be. I've still got a little clay at the bottom. This time I'm going to use a rubber rib to pull up with. I'm trying to get that last little bit of thickness up. And I'm putting very little pressure towards the top. If your cylinder starts to flare out like that, you need to learn to throw a cylinder that's straight up and down. You can cup it back in. And to cup it back in, you wet your hands. You start below where you want to pull it back in, and you just gently work it up. And then reset the rim. You can take your flat wooden rib and really straighten it out. Almost everything you make will be based on the cylinder shape. Even when I throw a bowl, the first two pulls, I'm throwing a cylinder. And then from there it changes and, and I don't have the flat floor with the walls straight up. I start the gentle curve. But that's basically a, a cylinder. Action. The last thing you do before you cut the, the form from the bat is to dry the w extra water out of the bottom of the pot. If you leave all that water in the bottom, it'll be too soft and you need for the form to dry evenly. So you just take your sponge, wring it out, dry the extra water out, and then you want to cut it from the bat. Be sure to pull straight across. The tendency in the beginning is to pull up towards you so hold your thumbs on the bat and pull straight across. And I won't remove this from the bat until it's set and stiffened just in the, the room temperature for a little while.